It is the touchline here on Y254. I'm Robert Osoro. What a big fan we are coming. Now we are coming to the last hurdles of the touchline. But we are not done yet. We are here for the fans on and joining me for the fans on is none other than Eric Aganya. Eric, how are you doing, my brother? I'm good. I'm good, my brother. Yeah. It's been quite long. <laughs> yeah, sometime. Eh? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What have been your highlights of the week, man? My highlight of the week, uh, maybe sports-wise, football-wise, at least Manchester United came back to winning ways <laughs> uh, after that yeah. shock against uh, yes. Aston Villa. Uh -huh. We were able to recover. Yeah. Uh, but basically, the most important thing, I think, uh, is the, the work that we are doing with the community. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, what mm -hmm. really matters. Uh, yeah. And uh, we are trying to organize... Uh, a clean up to do with the uh, sports for green environment. Ah, uh, it's a the, big conversation now. Uh, yeah, yeah, sports so for green environment. Yeah. Actually, we are, we are doing it in Kawa West on 26th mm -hmm. under the leadership of Dr. Clement Kamaru yeah. with uh, guys from Sports for Green uh, Club. That is, uh, we have the likes of Victor Shinga, former footballers. Mm -hmm. We are bringing those young men together. Yeah. Uh, we do something uh, for sports and at the same time for the green environment on 26th of November. You should come. Yeah. You should come and join us on that Saturday. Uh, it, it's uh, like, uh, uh, I think you, you saw what happened also. The CS was in Egypt talking about climate change. Yes, yes, yes. yes green yes, and yes, everything. Yes, yes. So something yes. that people should look forward to. Yes, something that we, we all need to embrace. Yeah. A clean environment. Mm -hmm. we, we have tree planting. We are not only just picking, yes. uh, keeping the environment clean. Mm -hmm. But we want the environment to be green. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see that uh, this is something we need to bring in young people. Mm -hmm. Young people. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're partnering with uh, young people in Car West. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Clement is really coming in to support such kind of initiatives mm -hmm. to empower the young guys yeah. for future. Well, it's a big one for yes. what is happening there with the Dr. Kamaru and the Green Initiative. So the youths of Kawa West get in there, play football, as well as taking care of your environment. Big week. I think that game was on Villa Manchester United. <laughs> uh, the conversation was uh, the key difference Bruno Fernandes brings to Manchester United that is unrecognizable. I think uh, we have those uh, unrecognized heroes. Eh? Yeah. Uh, and key, uh, and uh, Bruno Fernandes, I think, in that game proved to be one of those people. Mm -hmm. That in the event that uh, he's not there, he's not in a game, now you can see. Because uh, we could see Van de Beek did not click completely, yes. completely. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, in my opinion, he's, uh, he's playing days for Manchester United. Yes. Uh, uh, over. <laughs> uh, over as much. the one from Ajax. No, no, no. no. He's, yeah. uh, he's, uh, I don't know, unless a miracle happens. Eh? Mm -hmm. Because you saw now uh, in midweek when uh, Bruno came back. Yes. And uh, Scott came back into the team. Uh, the chances were created. Uh, there is fluidity in the team, yeah. and they were able to score four goals. And mm -hmm. I think uh, in that game also we have to give it to Marcus Rashford. Yes, he's he's really. Uh, I think he's really earned his position in the England team, mm -hmm. uh, because if you look at the the few games or the games he has played under under Ten Hag, yeah. he's coming back to the Marcus Rashford of Van Gaal. Yeah. Remember when uh -huh, he burst yes. into the scene? Eh? Yes. Uh, yeah, he's coming back to those Confident, days. Young, Confidence is there. Taking on defenders. Uh, yes, taking on defenders and being able to switch from yeah. one position to another. If you re realize the game, he started off as a winger yes. to accommodate Marshall and then he came into the middle. You know, he's able to switch off from the wing, from one wing to another. Yes. And at the same time, coming in as a number nine. Yeah. So I think Marcus Rashford uh, is also doing really, really well. Talking about the World Cup and the England squad, uh, is it a squad that gives you confidence that they can get on to, I think they were in the semi-finals? Yeah, the semi-finals, uh, in, 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 in the Euros. In the Euros, in the Euros yeah. Yeah, 2018 mm. World Cup, not in the semis? Mm, I think quarters, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they, they, didn't, they didn't make semi-finals. Yeah. I think I don't know what happens with the England team because uh, there's a lot of hula baloo about them before the <laughs> tournament. Uh, big talk. And uh, yeah. there's big talk. The yes. media is all over. Yeah. And you see, again, uh, uh, right now it's being rocked by, 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 by selection issues. You, you remember what yeah. Jose Mourinho said about yeah. Tammy Abraham mm -hmm. being left out and yes. uh, you're picking somebody who has only, uh, Phillips who has only played 56 minutes yes. and you're leaving Tammy Abraham. And Mourinho mm. brings in another. Is it because of the skin of uh, the, the skin color or something? You like never that? Know. So you see, yes. uh, there is that that now England team is surrounded a lot by media talk. Yes. That now I th I don't know if it gets into the heads of these guys, because there is a lot of expectations when they are going into a tournament. Yes. And uh, if you look at the depth and the talent in the team, they yeah. deserve to win. 
just yeah. like Belgium, what yes. what happens? Yes, they they flop. <laughs> uh, the, when it, when it matters the when most. When it matters the, the most, most yeah. yeah. Because the euro, we thought they'll carry yeah. the euro. Yes. Look at what happened in the fight. Belgium, no chance. But uh, also, yes, w scores are being named here. We are getting the final scores now. But it is the big names that are not going on to the World Cup. The big misses. Yeah, big. France, not having Golo Kante, not having Paul, yeah, Paul Pogba, 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 the injured uh, Verane, even yeah. though he made it onto the squad. The squad yeah. Can they play uh, a good World Cup? I, I love France and it's my team that I've been supporting for quite some time. And yeah. uh, this World Cup, uh, the likes, the missing of Ngolo Kante and Paul Pogba, mm -hmm. uh, we really affect that midfield in terms of creating of opportunities. Yes. And uh, that one is a challenge. And I would like to see how the coach, who the coach will bring in to replace yes. N'Golo Kante, especially N'Golo Kante. Mm -hmm. For Paul Pogba, you can have a few other players, but N'Golo Kante plays a very uh, crucial role in, in, the, in breaking up play in that yes. midfield mm -hmm. and also in starting up moves mm -hmm. uh, in that midfield. Mm -hmm. So his absence in this team actually uh, may affect uh, France, and that's my biggest worry. Yeah. And, uh, but I'm, I'm glad to see, look at the attack. The attack mm -hmm. has two old men, <laughs> yeah. Karim Benzema and Oliver, G Oliver Giroud. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad to see Giroud coming back because Giroud is a, is a, is a, is a proven goal scorer. Yeah, he was actually one of the key players that they had in the 2018 World. But yes, yes, yes. a big uh, worry also for a team from Africa, Senegal, mm. not having a uh, Sadio Mane. Mm. Actually, a very, it's, it's actually the same as France. You look at France, a whole midfield that was there in 2018 mm. was not going to be in the it's team. Matuidi, Kante, Pogba. Pogba yes. You look at Senegal, the team that qualified for the uh, World, World Cup, Cup and also play, won the African mm. final. Mm. Sadio Mane, injured. Injured. You have the Alio, who is uh, the uh, partner to Koulibaly, to Koulibaly injured. injured yeah. The two fullbacks, yes. also not injured. in the team. So, shaky. Yes, yeah, Senegal is there, but it's, that it's, one makes you worry. It's, it's a big blow to Africa because yeah. you see yeah. all the hopes, most yeah. of the hopes, maybe yeah. eighty percent of the hopes of uh, making it to the latter stages of the World Cup yeah. uh, is in Senegal. Yes, because when you look at you look at those teams that have qualified. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of hope in Senegal, mm -hmm. so missing uh, those star players yes. uh, really worries, and uh, that's where Ali is supposed mm -hmm. to prove himself as a coach. Yeah, because if you can bring in other young young uh, people and they, they 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 rise up to the occasion, yes, then he goes into history as one of the best coaches, mm -hmm. uh, African coaches that we've had. Yeah. Because uh, I had something on, uh, on social media. Mm -hmm. Senegalese were saying that they, they are going to use witchcraft to make sure <laughs> <laughs> Sadio Mane uh, yeah. gets fit before. <laughs> that one does not work. Uh, that, that one, I, I think, that one <laughs> is debatable. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Uh. But uh, it, it's a big miss to, 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 to Africa. Yeah. Because now our hopes were in Senegal. Mm. When you, you look at uh, Cameroon, mm. the way they performed in the Africa Cup of Nations with the likes of Abubakar, yes. uh, Vincent Abubakar also coming on to the side. And they look to be a team with confidence riding high yes. since Samuel Eto took over as the yes. president yes. of uh, uh, the Cameroon uh, Football Federation. They can do something. They, they the can do something club. because they also have a young squad that is coming in, yeah. and their preparation has been really, really good. Yeah. Because they have two guys who know what they're doing, uh, who have been there, done that. We have yeah. Robert Song on yes. the other side, and we have Samuel Eto as the president of the federation. Uh, these guys have been there. They have performed. They've won. I think they won the Olympics. Uh, yeah. with Cameroon. Mm -hmm. uh, they've gone through those harsh conditions. Now I think uh, one thing that Samuel Eto has really done. And that should be a wake-up call maybe to, 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 to our former footballers. Yes. He has taken up the reins of the federation and also they changed the perception and made the mm -hmm. players a little bit comfortable, increased the minimum wage and mm -hmm. such kind of things. Yes. So their preparation has been better than the previous World Cups. Yes. And uh, if uh, they can concentrate, uh, they have the capability uh, to cause a lot of up, uh, 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 unexpected uh, yes. things in the World Cup and mm -hmm. uh, they can bring us good results. Well, we'll be following that and we'll be giving everything that will be happening, considering that we are just eight days away to the World Cup and Group H has one clash that every African will be waiting for. That will be Ghana versus Uruguay. And <laughs> Uruguay, they shocked me yesterday when they were naming their squad. Luis Suarez yeah. makes on to the squad. He was there in the 2010. Squad. 
Yes. Edison Cavani makes on to yeah, that squad. squad. Yeah. Araujo yes, <laughs> also yes, makes yes. on to that squad. Yes. But for Ghana, the 2010 players like Asamoah Gyan, yes. Mensa, Montari yes. are not in the squad. Yeah. When you look at the way Uruguay is at the currently the likes of Militao and Ghana currently, can we have that payback to what they did to us in 2010? Mm, I don't think so, because uh, you see, the, the, the Ghanaians uh, have uh, failed to bring in experience. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the Uruguay squad, yeah. uh, they have the youthful guys coming in, mm -hmm. and then they have the experience. You cannot doubt yes. uh, Luis Suarez's winning mentality. Yes. You cannot doubt Cavani's winning mentality. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are those games that experience matters, yes. uh, that uh, have been there. We've mm -hmm. been in this situation, losing situation, yeah. but we've overcome. And this is what we need to do. We need to pull together. We need to work. Yes. And that's when you get experienced players coming in. Look at Real Madrid. Yeah. The blend between ex youth and experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the striking force between uh, Benzema and this other young Brazilian boy. Uh, he has really improved because of Benzema. Yes. And uh, how I wish they could have brought in at least two, three people uh, who are there in the last World Cup when the, the, that handball kicked them out. Yeah. Uh, they have something to play for. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, and well, uh, but uh, but again, uh, I wonder why now, as you are talking about the big games, the big names missing. Yeah. Why why would the gear not to make it to the World Cup? That was my f my next question. What what wh what could be in uh, what could be in uh, Enrique's mind? Enrique's mind to leave mm -hmm. David Ahea off the Spain uh, uh, national team because he's a top goalkeeper. He's been Spain's number one goalkeeper. Yes, and he's the best experienced goalkeeper that Spain has at the moment. I don't think there's any and, other goalkeeper. And if you look at, him. not only that, but if you look at his form, yes, this season, he's yeah. been brilliant for Manchester United, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. He saved Manchester United a lot of, a lot of uh, points. Yeah. But I know one thing Henry, uh, Luis Enrique has a problem with. He likes, he's just like Pep. He likes yes. a goalkeeper who can use his feet very well. Yes. And that is not one of uh, the gear strongholds. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, he's not Ederson, he's not Allison, yes. uh, the likes of keepers who can start the move from behind. Uh, that is what uh, Enrique likes. But, but when you see yeah. now his, his reflexes and his yes. capability to make those crucial saves mm -hmm. and his experience, you know, even if he was not the first keeper, he should have been in that squad. That, that, that is what uh, many have people have actually squad. said. Mo most of the former players are saying that you need that experience. Yes, even, even if it's on the bench. Going to yes, play. even if it's on the bench, yes. in the dressing room and mm -hmm. what have you. Yeah. And if you look at the gear right now in Manchester United, is among the senior, more, the most senior players yes. in Manchester United. So you need that. And then uh, I don't know, I don't understand Luis Enrique. Con because conversations are here and there, but I think one major one is that uh, mm. Spain doesn't like players who play outside of Spain. For most but here of you want time. to win this cup, yeah. right? and uh, you look at the Spanish squad. It's really, really a young squad. Uh, yes. They are rebuilding after the likes of Iniesta, the likes of Xavi, the likes mm -hmm. of Pique exiting the the, 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 the scene. Yeah. So they are rebuilding. If you look at most of their kids, they are, they are between 18. The likes of Gavi, they are between 18 and 23. Yes. So you need a 25, 29 year old who's been there, done that. Well, you will be you will be the best to answer this question well because it might be payback. For Manchester <laughs> not giving Enrique the job. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it's, it's personal, maybe you never I know. Don't <laughs> for Ten Hag. I, like, I don't want to deal with any <laughs> Manchester United, Manchester United uh, player. <laughs> but uh, Sergio Busquets is in the squad. I think he's now the most experienced yeah, yeah, in the in Spanish studies. side. And also, mm. Ramos also did not make it yeah. onto that squad. But I think Ramos is uh, basically on injuries. He's not, yeah. Since he moved to PSG, he's not really recovered his, yeah. his original form. Well, big matches coming away this afternoon. Early kick off there, Manchester City versus Brentford. Bournemouth, Everton will be in the gold rush with Liverpool playing home to Southampton with a new manager now. Nottingham Forest will be home to Crystal Palace. Leeds will be travelling to London to play Tottenham and West Ham will be playing home to Leicester City. Big match at 80.30 today between Newcastle and Chelsea and then we'll be finishing off the night with the Wolves versus Arsenal. So those matches will be coming away. But we've got to talk about the improvement that the Arsenal team has had at the moment. 
Mm, they, they, they've really done well uh, and uh, they have exceeded expectations uh, yeah. in in my in my in my opinion actually i was trolling some of their fans earlier yeah. on in the season telling them match day 10 you'll not be on top mm -hmm. we are at match day now it's 16. yes uh, and uh, they're still in contention they're still mm. leading the yeah. lock i think um, the belief is coming in the belief is coming in and uh ateta has uh, brought in uh, a team spirit yeah and uh the, 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 if they stay injury free, if their key yeah. stars, the key players stay injury free, especially yeah. Thomas Pate. Yes. Thomas Pate calls the shots in the midfield. That uh, yeah. game in the, the midweek where they played and they were eliminated from the league. Yes, yes, yes. Was it a statement of intention from Ateta saying that for me, I'm not concerned with the other trophies, I'm in the marathon for the league? If it is a statement, then it's a wrong one because uh, the league, uh, you see, you have experienced coaches who also go in for the Premier League and uh, yes. coaches like Pep who has the depth. Mm -hmm. uh, because you see, Ateta should have, uh, in my opinion, should have concentrated on getting a cup, get yes. a trophy this season. Uh -huh. don't, 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 don't live without a trophy because uh, if you look at now the Europa League or wherever they are playing again, uh, look at the teams that are dropping into the Europa League, eh? they are major, yes. major teams. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, you look at now the FA, they may get a harsh draw, uh -huh. and then yes. now you have dropped over the Carabao Cup, and then mm -hmm. the Premier League. Again, you never know. You have yeah. Pep here, uh, who who is uh, who has the depth, yes. who has the experience, <laughs> and who has the desire to win it again. Yes. And then uh, for Ateta, if these players who are going to the World Cup, if they come with injuries, he's in trouble. Mm -hmm. He's in trouble. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's in trouble because if you look at his second team, his yeah. second team can't replicate. Uh, if he makes five subs, yeah. that team formation changes and they're likely mm. to lose that game. Well, they are playing well at the moment and actually Arsenal is leading the table. But uh, Man City will be playing early and then Arsenal will be finishing off the day. But one team that has also improved and two managers will be playing today for the first time against each other is Newcastle versus Chelsea. What an improvement that uh, Newcastle has had under uh, Eddie Howe. Eddie Howe, if you look at what Eddie Howe did at Bournemouth, yeah. he brought them from down and he maintained them at the middle table. Yes. And uh, it was only because uh, uh, of lack of fans that uh, yes. Eddie Howe was not able to, to do well and Bournemouth uh, yeah. uh, were relegated at that particular moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, but he's a good coach. Yes, he's one of the best coaches that uh, in the Premier League that the, Engli uh, the England has. Yeah, uh, and um, he's made some good buys. Not very expensive, yes. but good buys. Remembering Newcastle has a lot of cash. Yeah. So he didn't go. He didn't went. He did go for the flamboyant players. He didn't go for the high-ranking players. Yes. He brought in players who are average and who are willing to go an extra mile. And here credit has to be given to the likes of Trippier. Yeah. Look at what he's come in and what he's done. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has uh, rallied the team behind the manager. Yes. And uh, they're playing good football. They have the fighting spirit. And they are not scared of either you are big or small. They are going, they are going to, today they're going to cause Chelsea problems. Yes. And uh, they're going to cause Chelsea problems uh, because uh, they have the belief Mm -hmm. And they are on high. They are scoring very many goals and yes. conceding very few. Yes. Uh, not only the scoring bit, but also their defense. They have tightened the defense. Yeah. Uh, they are winning four one, four nil, mm -hmm. five one. You see. Yes. So the go their goal difference is really high, mm -hmm. and you see they are on top of uh, they are in the top six. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a big one there for Newcastle against Chelsea. Their Graham Potter also has brought in some difference to Chelsea, but for me. They look more or less the same as um, Thomas Tuchel's side. Uh, for these are two managers with two different philosophies. Yeah. Because look at the way Brighton is playing. That's mm -hmm. Graham Potter. Yes. Confident guys who can knock the ball around confidently without fear. Yes. Thomas Cusel had uh, drilled into Chelsea that they have to be defensive, they have to be pragmatic, they have to be uh, uh, timely and to time their runs, you yes. see, wait, sit back and attack mm -hmm. on a counter. Yeah. This guy is bringing in a concept whereby let us play free-flowing football. 
it will take him time because again Chelsea has players who are in their in their in their in their early 30s yes. who are finishing their careers it's not easy to change the, uh, such kind of players like Aubameyang to start now going for, for yeah to start going for the ball him yeah. he has to wait for the counter attack mm-hmm. he has to wait yeah. for the one nine mm-hmm. so i'm sure uh, this season uh, Chelsea may struggle to finish in the top 4 yeah but if he's given time and he's given resources to bring in young players who can adapt to his philosophy, yeah. Graham Potter is a very good coach. Look right. at what he did at Brighton. The success that is being enjoyed at Brighton right now, that yes. is his work. Well, it's actually a big one there for Graham Potter against Chelsea. For Chelsea, that they'll be away at, against Newcastle today. We've got Tottenham, Leeds, Nottingham, Crystal Palace, Liverpool, Southampton, Bournemouth versus Everton. And then uh, the early kickoff there is actually like uh, 30 minutes from now will be Manchester City versus uh, Brentford. But big win for Leeds against mm-hmm. Tottenham the last weekend. Yes. They are Leeds winning actually for the first time away and uh, Liverpool losing at home. Uh, I think for 70 matches now they have yes, gone yes, without yes, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. losing at home. Marsh doing something good with Leeds comfortably say they will be out of the relegation. No, they'll be out of the relegation and uh, they have claimed some big fish uh, starting with uh, Liverpool. Uh, They have a young man there uh, who is creating havoc. eh? I think Marsh, what he has brought in, he has brought in the the, the clinical and the finishing. eh? Uh Because that was their problem. eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, he's tightening the defence a little bit because you look at uh, Bielsa was playing an open, free-flowing football. And uh, they could concede a lot. Uh, but right now uh, they are tightening. They are not winning pretty. They are winning two one, one nil. Yeah. Uh, but they are picking the points. Yeah. And they are being they are being clinical. Mm-hmm. And I think the confidence is coming in. Yeah. And once the confidence comes into a team, that team becomes very difficult to beat. And Manchester United. Uh, one thing I learned from the game against Aston Villa. Uh, their key players were making Manchester United good. Anthony. Verane, Bruno, uh, Bruno mm. and yes. all that. Yeah. And in the game, uh, after the Europa League win against Sociedad, he trusted that same team to go ahead. Mm. But their players were still not into that level to, to make United uh, be the team that it's supposed to be. Uh, I think first and foremost, I have to give credit to the manager. He has steadied the ship. Yeah. And uh, he has brought in some discipline. You can and see it, his identity now. His identity, is, it's, it's, the fighting spirit is there. We have yes. players now who are ready to fight for the manager. Yeah. We have players, and one thing he said, he said, no contracts, you earn your contract. Yeah. Uh, no contracts uh, being given. If you don't earn your contract, go. Mm-hmm. And you've seen he's putting up Maguire for sale. Uh, yes. in January. But again, uh, I believe uh, I am an ardent and a strong Manchester United fan, but I want to, to be honest here, I believe we are two, we are three signings away from contesting for the Premier League. Uh-huh. We need a, a, a simple, a clinical finisher. A double digit. Uh, yes, score. finisher. Ronaldo can do it, but uh, the problem with Ronaldo is that uh, edge has caught up. Yeah. Uh, Martial uh, is injury prone, yeah. so we need a striker. We need a midfielder who can come in to replace Bruno in the event that is there or there. Yes. And then we need, we need uh, one defender and then we'll be good to go. Well, Manchester United is also a big team that everyone follows. But big managerial changes. Southampton without now Arsenal coming into the game. And then uh, we've got uh, other, bl- uh, other, like the new coach was coming for Southampton now. Baptism by fire to go and play against <laughs> Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, he's lucky because it's not mm. Liverpool of the older years, uh, the two, uh, three true. seasons yes. ago. Mm. Because I think Liverpool this season have become the weeping boys. Mm-hmm. Look at the games uh, uh, they've been able to draw and uh, those that they've lost, uh, mm. games they wouldn't have drawn and lost last season. Yes. Uh, but it's still a difficult game for Southampton. Mm. And uh, this is what affects Southampton. Look at the managerial changes in the last two, three seasons. Yeah. Uh, they've had so many so many yeah. that tends to affect the team in terms of identity yes in terms of identity because each manager comes with a different style of play mm-hmm. but i think uh, there's another coach we need to give uh, credit to is uh, the crystal palace coach there's something Very silently true. Very silently true. he's yeah. winning games silently yes. uh, mm. and uh, he's, he's a coach who was uh, who has surprised many 
Patrick Vieira is actually a very good coach and not many people thought that Crystal Palace could be where they are at the moment with yes, the yes. kind of football yes, yes. they are playing. But I think for me, uh, Vieira started showing his, uh, his uh, mantleness when he started that draw with Man City. So winning against Man City, you could see he has a different style on the way he's playing. But I cannot let you go without talking about uh, the Europa League draw where <laughs> 2011, it was Manchester United, Barcelona, the final of the Champions League. Yes, yes. Now it is a Europa League playoff game. Talk about how times have changed. How times have changed, uh, yeah. even before going to the Manchester-Barcelona yeah. game. Yeah. Look at the teams that are in the Europa League. Yes. Uh, look at the teams that have yeah. come, the likes of Ajax. Uh -huh. These are teams last yeah. season who are serious Champions yeah. League contenders. Yes. And that's how competitive football has become. Uh -huh. And uh, now coming to the Manchester United, it means uh, really football has evolved and uh, the likes in quotes, I'll say the big teams are no longer yeah. the big teams. Yes. Because now you see the real competition among the traditional big teams is in the Europa League and not yeah. in the Champions League. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that game uh, against Manchester to United and uh, Barcelona will be an interesting because there are two coaches who have come in yeah. to steady the ship mm -hmm. in teams that have not been doing well. Yeah. And uh, we'll be able to see what mm -hmm. Xavi and uh, on the other side and Hag uh, will be able to come up in the, uh, with their sleeves so that we see who, who, who carries the day. Yeah. So it will be an interesting game to watch. Uh, really interesting. Well, we'll be following up on this one and th those matches that you'll be following up for the Europa League, for the Champions League. But the Champions but League, remember again, we have Liverpool versus uh, Real, Real Madrid. Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> that, that too early, early, too early. So it means one of the good teams will be kicked out too early. Well, I, I don't know how that match PSG is going to also, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how it is going to come out, but it is a tough one for all the teams. But it's like... The Champions League has now moved to the Europa League. Yes, because yes, that's yes. That's where yes. the game the, the, That's where the competition is. Because yes. if you look at the Champions League, you'll be able to support two, 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 two teams who are strong. But if you go to the, to the Europa League, yeah. uh, you have around eight teams. Yes. The likes of, uh, and others didn't even make it. The likes of Atletico Madrid. Yes. Look wow. at Atletico. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was knocked out. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you see, yeah. the, 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 it will be interesting, interesting. Yeah. And then uh, I think this season we're just seeing uh, crazy things because we have a World Cup that is in the middle of the season. We don't know the shape in which these players will come back after the World Cup. That's Look at the fatigue. That, that's why we finish off the <laughs> Premier League because this is actually also the last uh, Premier League match day as we head on to the World Cup. Which team will you be supporting for the World Cup? I'm a big lover of France, yeah. but I'm looking at the Brazilian squad and I'm scared. <laughs> Might it not be too much of a name for Brazil with those key players, great players who might not perform at the World Cup? But blending but between games. youth and youth and uh, experience, yeah, experience. They have brought in this young guy, Dani Alves. Yes, uh, at his that age, experience, yes, experience. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But the midfield of Brazil, the forward, the line forward line is Brazil. scary, my the friend. The keeping department, uh, the forward line is scary. The yeah. pace at the forward line. Yes. Is is look at Rodrigo, whatever he's doing. It is. Uh, I believe if they are going to play serious teamwork, yes, and then supplement it with individual brilliance, the oh World Cup my. is there. They will create problems. Yeah. They will create problems. But for me, I'm betting a World Cup going to South America this time. Uh, which one? Argentina. Brazil or Argentina? Uh, Argentina, Argentina, I'm not a big fan, but uh, yeah. they also have a good squad and Messi is in, 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 in form. Eh? Yeah. You look at his last games, his few last games, maybe 10 games at PSG, he's really been doing well. So for you, uh, France uh, might win it or Brazil? I'm, I'm routing for France, yeah. but I'm looking at the, 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 the Brazilian squad, it's nice, yeah. it's good. Mm -hmm. And they have an experienced coach, yeah. they have Argentina, the yeah. World Cup is going to be fireworks, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> that is where we come to the end of the touchline here on Y254. Thanks a lot, Eric, for coming through for us. I'm Robert Osoro. Till the next time, enjoy your weekend, enjoy your afternoon. Continue watching Y254 here on the touchline. Good afternoon. Have a lovely evening.